Hey, how's it going? This is a presentation on behalf of Can Canadian, the Canadian Math Kangaroo Contest, and it's a presentation that involves solving problems that involve counting. Uh, this video and the problems within are uh, designated for students in the grades of 5 and 6. Uh, my name is Bryce Watson. Let's get started. Today, we'll be solving math word problems. Uh, which involve counting the number of different possibilities of something. An example could be uh, in, a, uh, in question three of this uh, presentation, we're going to be looking at the number of combinations you can have of three different uh, numbers where the numbers don't repeat. Uh, these questions don't re really require like a formula or uh, anything like that. It's better, I find, to solve them by visualizing the possibilities and then just counting them up. I'll show you how we do, uh, how I do this with illustrations on the slides ahead. So let's go. Our first question asks or tells us that Anne connected each point from the upper row to each point from the lower row. Uh, the upper row just means the top row of points and the lower row just means the lower row of points in this picture. We see we've got quite a tangle of lines, so it seems like it'd be hard to just count them outright. But we're asked how many segments did Anne draw? Um, in this case, segment is just another word for line, so we're really just asking how many lines did it take her to make this picture? Well, if she connected each upper row point to each lower row point, then she drew enough lines such that this was connected to all of these, and this was connected to all of these, and so on, as you can see. So, if we wanted to know how many lines she drew, we just need to know how many lines it takes to make all of these connections. Each upper point is connected to six lower points. Uh, so each upper point has six lines attached to it. Since there are five upper points, there are six times five is equal to 30 lines in total. So to create this picture where each upper point is connect connected to each lower point, Anne drew 30 lines. And 30 lines is the answer. So um, we're looking at problem two now. And it's about darts. Uh, how many different scores can we obtain by shooting two darts at the dartboard shown in this picture? Uh, we've got like two, the dartboard in this situation is like two circles, um, a little bit overlapping each other. And you should know that missing the board is possible in this case. So we're looking for the number of different scores we can get from throwing two darts at this dartboard. Uh, one might assume that, hey, that's probably just the number of ways two darts can hit the board. Uh, if we were following this logic, we might say that the first dart could land in any of these four places, outside the board, on the two-point board, on the three-point board, or on the six-point board. For each of these possibilities, there could be four, there would be four more possibilities for where the second dart could land. Uh, these are just the same four possibilities again, the same for the second dart. Um, this would suggest that there's four times four is equal to 16 scores possible. Uh, you'll see this on the next page. However, this doesn't mean that all 16 are different from each other, which means two different uh, patterns of the darts hitting could give you the same score. So we need to check each of these 16 by hand to make sure each of them lead to a different score. The number of different scores we can find from this collection of 16 is the number of different scores total. So we have 16 different possibilities, or 16 different ways, I should say, for two darts to hit the board. And we need to find out the score for each of these, the score associated with each of these, which is just the sum of what the first dart has and the second dart and see how many different scores we get when looking at all 16 of these. I'll show you what I mean. Here's a table and on the left hand side we have where the first dart hits and the second dart hits 
And on the right hand side, we have the score, which is calculated by uh, adding together the score of where the first dart landed and the score of where the second dart landed. So if we look through this whole list, um, we'll find that we have nine different scores. Here they are right here. So that means the answer to the question is nine. All right, so on to question three. The combination for opening a safe is a three digit number made up of different digits. Uh, how many different combinations can you make using only the digits one, three, five? So we need to figure out how many combinations we can make for this safe that are three digits uh, and can involve one, three, and five, but we can't have any of those uh, more than once. So one option might be five, three, one. Or another option could be one, three, five. We just need to figure out how many of these are possible. Notice that 551 and uh, 333, for example, couldn't work because in each of these, one of the digits is being used more than once. So let's try to figure this out in the next slide. So once again, uh, the problem at hand is that we need to find uh, the number of different combinations we can make with 1, 3, and 5, and making sure that all the digits are different. The best way to do this is just to create a flowchart to see what different options we have. I'll show you what I mean. So if we're going to make a combination, uh, what's our first digit going to be? Well, we have three options. It could be one, three, or five. In each of those cases, you now only have two options because we've already used one digit and we're not allowed to use digits twice. So in each of these, there's two options associated. You can see them here. Now, for each case, the choice for the final digit will only be one. There will only be one option because you've already used two digits out of the three you can use, and you can't use any of the digits twice. So in each case, there's one digit that has yet to be used. And here we see we have six different combinations. So this means that there's six different combinations we can make with three digits where none of the digits repeat. So the answer is six. Ivana wants to draw flowers with five petals that are colored differently. She only has two different colors, red and yellow. How many different flowers can Ivana draw if she colors each petal using one of the two colors? Flowers that can be rotated to look the same are not considered. Uh, they're not considered different, I should say. As you can see down here, uh, this flower on the left, if it's rotated clockwise, you can see that it's the same as the flower on the right. So to determine how many different flowers Ivana can draw, you need to think that each petal is either red or yellow. So that means the flower she draws is either all red or all yellow, or some combination of red and yellow. This is the same thing as saying, uh, there's five red petals, no red petals, or there's a common, uh, some number between zero and five of red petals. So if we, all the flowers she can draw can be categorized by the number of red petals they have from zero to five. Now, for a certain number of red petals, there is more than one flower could be possible because given a certain number of red petals and a certain number of, certain number of yellow petals, we might be able to rearrange the petals so you have two new flowers that aren't the same if they're rotated. So the way that we're going to find the number of flowers that she can draw is by counting up the number of flowers possible with each number of red petals from zero to five. So I've made a table on the right over here. And uh, on the left hand side, we have the number of red petals. On the right hand side, we're gonna put down the number of flowers corresponding to each uh, setting for a number of petals. 
So starting with the option of having zero petals, we can see that, or zero red petals, I should say, we can see that there's really only one possible flower if we do this, no matter how we change the petals. It's still the same flower, so the number of flowers for this set is one. If we color one red petal, we still see that no matter where, we can't really move around the petals to create a new flower. It'll always be the same flower. So again, the number of flowers for this one is one. Uh, when things get exciting is when we p uh, color two petals. Um, I choose to color the first two right beside each other. But if we move this petal here or this petal there, we actually get a new flower where there's now a uh, separation between the two red petals of one yellow petal. Notice that no matter if we choose the first move or the second move, it's the same flower, just moved slightly. Uh, so the number of possible flowers we have for two red petals is therefore two flowers. Now let's imagine if we colored another petal. Uh, now we have three. Just like in the last case, if we move a petal, we see there's actually an opportunity for another flower. This means there's two flowers possible for three red petals. Finally, uh, we could color four. It's kind of easy to see that there's only one option for a flower with four red petals. So the number of flowers is one. And if we color all the petals red, there's only one possible flower. So the number of flowers there is just one. The total number of flowers Yvonne can draw is just the total of this right uh, column. So that's eight. So the answer is eight. A pizza shop offers a basic version of a pizza with mozzarella and tomatoes, to which one or two toppings must be added. Customer select from four toppings, peppers, olives, artichokes, and mushrooms. Moreover, there are three different sizes of pizza available, small, medium, and large. How many different kinds of pizza are available in total? So to solve this problem, like we did with the combination, we're gonna create a web where we lay out the first set of choices, and then for each of those choices, there's gonna be a further set of choices. And once we reach the end of that, we'll just count up the ends of this uh, web, and this will be the number of pizzas we have. So for the first choice, we have uh, three choices for pizza size. Then for each of those choices of a size, there are four options to make a one topping pizza. You could have uh, a pepper pizza, an olive pizza, an artichoke pizza, or a mushroom pizza. And for each of those sizes, there is also a certain number of choices for a two topping pizza. This number of choices for a two topping pizza will be determined on the next page. So let's create the web, which will eventually give us the total number of pizzas. So for our first choice, it's just the size of the pizza. We could have a small, medium, or large. So we have three choices for the first. For each of those, there's four choices for a one topping pizza because you could have a mushroom only, an olive only, a pepper only, or an artichoke only. Now, for each of those, there's also a certain number of um, pizzas we can make that have two toppings. So the question is now we need to figure out the number of two topping pizzas that can be made from four toppings. What I think we should do is we should go through all the possible combinations of the two toppings and then find a number of pizzas which can cover them all. I'll show you what I mean. So we need a pizza that's mushroom and pepperoni. We need another pizza that's mushroom and olive. And we need another pizza that's mushroom and artichoke. Now, we also need a pizza that's olive and pepperoni. We need one that's olive and artichoke. And we need one that's olive and mushroom. But remember, we already stated that we have a pizza that's olive and mushroom. Cross that one out. Now, we need a pizza that's artichoke and pepperoni. We need one that's artichoke and mushroom. We need one that's artichoke and olive. 
But remember, we already covered an artichoke and mushroom and an artichoke and olive pizza. So cross those out. And we need one that's pepperoni and artichoke. We need one that's pepperoni and olive. We need one that's pepperoni and mushroom. But we already covered all three of those types, so cross those three out again. This leaves us with six two-topping pizzas. That's all we need to cover all the possible combinations of two, of two toppings from four. So that means for each of the size of pizzas, there's six two-topping pizzas also possible, along with the four one-topping pizzas. So the total number of pizzas possible is just the number of small pizzas possible plus the number of mediums possible plus the num number of larges possible. This is just 10 plus 10 plus 10 in total, 30. So the number of total pizzas possible is 30. Thank you all for your attention and have a great day. Good luck studying.